Spencer Lazar, MMA interviews alongside the people's champ, Mr. Tito Ortiz, your guy Joe Williams just got a nice victory there over Jamie Yeager, a valiant opponent, a very big win for him in his uh, growing career here. I think so. You know, Joe Williams, um, I've actually worked with him uh, about four years ago, five years ago. He came in and he helped me out for one of my camps. Uh, great wrestler, his stand-up skills getting a lot better. Uh, I see his head movements a lot better, too. On top, he's an animal. You know, his takedowns are great. Uh, his hitting on the fence is amazing. He's a guy who's an up-and-coming guy who uh, a lot of guys to look out for. Yeah, um, does he train with he you right now? No, he does not train with me right now. He's actually he trains uh, Red Kings MMA, um, and they're taking great, great advantage of uh, a great athlete. Yeah, it was kind of crazy that he ended up against Jamie because they do train together, sort of, and, you know, have the same coaches. So Rafael just kind of stepped out. Yeah, he stepped away. You know, um, actually, uh, Jake uh, from Calvary, um, actually, because Joe's from Calvary Chapel, actually, uh, for wrestling, and I, he's one of his main coaches. And, you know, um, as he stepped away, you know, Jaeger is a guy who I've coached, actually, Ultimate Fighter, and uh, it was one of those things. It's, it's just a matchup deal, man. A tough wrestler. Jaeger's always had problems against uh, tough wrestlers, and uh, it takes heart. I mean, you got to defend the shot, got to defend the grind, and Jaeger has problems against that. And this is a great fight for Joe to take uh, take advantage of. Definitely. And of course, there was news recently coming out about Cyborg and the UFC saying they would uh, pay, I guess, for Mike Dolce to take care of her and make sure that she safely gets down to weight. Has there anything happened with uh, Dolce coming on board or what's going on there? Um, well, actually, well, we're still in, uh, in cahoots, uh, you know, Dana and all of us, uh, UFC, we're still in good terms. Uh, we're just working on making the right things happen. You know, uh, everything, all the yes and no comes down to Chris Cyborg of uh, doing the fight. You know, uh, her making the weight, she told me prior that it's going to be hard for her to make uh, 135. Um, but uh, I think really it comes down to making a decision and making this fight happen. I think we can make it happen. Um, you know, I think it's UFC just making sure she is taken care of uh, as the champion she is. You know, she made a mistake last year of uh, coming up positive for a substance that was illegal in California. Huh? But she won't let me that, let that happen again. As I became a management now, um, I put my name, my name and my stamp approval on her of making sure these problems will never happen again. Do you still... You mentioned that you maybe want her to get a fight or two before Ronda. I mean, it at least seems like one fight at 35 seems to make sense. It also will build, you know, that huge fight with her and Ronda. 100%. Yeah, I mean, for her, she has to get, get down to 135 and be comfortable there. But for someone like Ronda, it's not something like, oh, that's an easy fight. Let's stop by. No, no, no. Ronda's a for real deal. Yeah, she's a champion at 135. Um, she showed her skills. I mean, was she 5 0 now? Um, but, you know, uh, Cyborg has defended her title already five times. Uh, you know, she's a for real, for real. She's not just a woman fighter, man. She's like a, a man in a woman's body. I mean, she's a, she's a true champion. Uh, she's one of the only girls I've ever wrestled with that was able to defend my shot. <laughs> and I was able to actually have strength, and she was strong as hell. And, I mean, I watched her striking skills. I mean, her and her husband were smart on my cage up in Big Bear, and, and she almost knocked her husband out. And I was just, like, watching him throw. I mean, for a woman to throw down with a man and inspire with no headgear and, and letting head kicks go and right hands go and, and to be able to Defend shots that I'm shooting on her. Um, when I had the opportunity to start doing my management company and have an opportunity to sign her, it was a no-brainer for me. It was it was easy. It was basic. Uh, I mean, she's a champion, as I say. She made a mistake last year. I'm like, say, I'm gonna put my stamp approval on her and make sure that'll never happen again. Obviously, she has the advantage in a stand-up. I don't think anybody's gonna, you know, say anything different. Do you feel though that she can? Stand, uh, be on the ground with Rousey and do well down there. 100%. Oh, I mean, she's uh, won many uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tournaments in Brazil uh, in Jiu Jitsu. Um, you can understand, this isn't a, this ain't a Jiu Jitsu match. This is a fight. When you're getting punched in the face, submissions only last maybe, you know, four seconds, three seconds. That little gap of that opening only happens for that much longer. But, but when you're punching someone in the face and ended up um, trying to do a submission, it's just one of those things, uh, it changes the whole game up. This ain't a jiu -jitsu match, this is a fight, so it changes everything. It was crazy in, the, in this Corano fight, she actually ended up, Corano actually ended up in Mount, I think, once or twice in that fight. If Ronda gets definitely a place, I would say she doesn't want to be against Ronda regardless. And do you just feel like she's improved since then enough to, to really hang with Ronda, because I've rolled Ronda, man. She's she's something else. I I've watched Ronda, and I, I you know I, I look up to that. as a woman champ. She, I think she's for real. I, I really do think she's for real. Um, but if she fights Cyborg, like I say, this ain't a jiu-jitsu match. You're getting punched in the face. You're getting knee in the face. And in strike force, you're never allowed to elbow. In UFC, you're allowed to elbow. And I'm gonna show her some ground and pound. I'm gonna show her how to use her elbows. And I think uh, when you get elbowed and punched in the face, it changes the whole game of submissions. And uh, 
I'm very confident on my fighter, um, and I think she'll do very well against Ronda. And like I say, Ronda's a great champion, um, and she has such a show uh, herself here on the 23rd of February. Yep. I know you will be there, but is there any timetable that you could say? If you had the choice right now, when would you want to book a fight for Cyborg? Well, I mean, the first thing is getting her weight down. Uh, you know, she walks around about 172, 171. Getting her down to about 146, 147 at a walking around weight, um, you know, and able to cut that 10 pounds. That's going to be a challenge. That's going to be, I mean, it's, I guess, USC's part to say he's going to bring the Dolce Mike diet about. Um, I don't know. I've been cutting weight for over 20 years. Uh, for someone to walk around at 170, for a man to cut down to 135, that's possible. For a woman, that's almost impossible because you understand, a woman walking around with 3% body fat is literally impossible. I mean, health, health wise. And I, I'm a person to look out for the health of my fighter. Um, and as an athlete, you gotta look at it in general. What's the right health decisions to do? I mean, I try to say, let's do, let's, let's do a catch weight, 140. Um, but if UFC is able to make it financially comfortable for a cyborg to make that cut, um, and Dolce is able to do the diet the right way, as he says he can do it, then it's possible to make the fight happen. Well, we definitely will hope to see it in 2013. This man, the People's Champ, will have his client, Cyborg versus Ronda Rousey, possibly this year. In the UFC, I'm Spencer Lazara. You're watching MMA Interviews.